So I'm about to discuss a topic that's very close to my heart and it's going to be one of the most important topics I'm going to talk about on this channel. So please listen carefully and maybe you can take a few notes. So this video is basically aimed at teachers, lecturers, professors, anyone in the edu education industry, primary school teachers, secondary school teachers, anyone that impacts a child's life or a young adult's life. So it's not about you. It's not about you as a teacher. It's about the lives that you're going to change and the mindset that you have throughout your career. So let me give you a bit of a backstory before I begin any sort of lessons. So my parents left to Ireland when I was at the age of around eight. And I was in Lithuania at the time. And basically... My parents were pursuing a better, better life, a better career, more money, basically. So I was basically left behind in Lithuania for two years and I was living with my grandmother. I didn't really understand why at the time, why my parents left, obviously, because I was a kid and times back then were a bit different, I suppose kids didn't really understand as much as they do today because of the changes of social media and things like that. But my behavior changed. Um, I became a little bit resilient. I wasn't doing my homework. I wasn't listening in class. And, you know, the teachers knew that my parents left abroad. They went to Ireland. That's where I live today. And... Yeah, as a kid, I didn't understand why my parents left, but that's a key point. My teachers, or my teacher, she knew that my parents have left, and that I was left alone with my grandmother for two years, well, for the time being. So, yeah, basically, I wasn't really listening in class too much. I was not being bold, I wasn't doing anything bad, but I also wasn't doing what I was told to do. But where the story changes is that the teachers, or the one single teacher, she was calling me a lot of bad names when I was at the age of eight. She was calling me a retard and mentally ill and calling me stupid saying that I won't ever amount to anything in life saying that I will most likely be an alcoholic when I grow up and I, I heard all of these things when I was at the age of eight <laughs> it's funny she said that I, I don't even drink but, um, yeah, and my life turned around quite okay. <laughs> but, yeah, unfortunately, this worsened my state, my mental state as a, as a kid. Because as a kid, you believe the adults around you, they're older than you, so you trust them. And you trust what they say. So, as an eight-year-old kid... I trusted this teacher and I, I believed her when she was telling me these things. And when I say I wasn't doing anything bad as a kid, I was just being a little bit resilient. Nothing out of the ordinary. But the things that she was saying to me impacted my mental health as a kid. And it made things worse. It made things a lot worse. I remember, <laughs> I remember going around apartment buildings. Well, basically in Lithuania, all the apartments have balconies and I was going under the balconies looking for cigarette butts and I was doing that at the age of eight, going around looking for cigarette butts and smoking them. <laughs> Yeah. 
I was thinking about smashing windows in apartment houses when walking around with my friends. Yeah. I think I was even going to shops and stealing things. I can't remember that well, but... I just know that my mental, mental state wasn't great as an eight-year-old kid. And it was just the impact of one teacher. I think... I might, might have been depressed at the age of eight. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go to school. At all. I remember pretending to be sick to my grandmother. And sometimes it'd work. And she'd let me stay at home. And let me see. And yes. Pretending to be sick. Just because I didn't want to go to school. Because... All the kids, they seen how my teachers treated me. The, the students, the kids, all the other kids in class, they knew my teacher's opinion of me. She was speaking out loud. She wasn't saying this in privately. <laughs> she was speaking these things out loud. And all the other kids, obviously they heard. So no one wanted to be friends. And those who did were a bad influence. Those were the kids from bad families, neglected kids, and for some reason I was clever enough not to hang around with them. Because I wasn't, I wasn't misbehaving to that extent. And those kids were treated better than I was in class. Maybe I was picked on because I was vulnerable, because... My parents weren't there because I was just with my grandmother and maybe they got a kick out of it, you know? Maybe the teacher enjoyed doing this. Always made fun of me in class. Always said things like, oh, Robert didn't do his homework again today. And, <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> Robert got a good grade. He must have cheated. I remember this one time we were doing a grammar test. So it's basically you write like a few pages or it's like three pages. At the age of eight, that was actually a lot. And Lithuanian grammar is quite difficult. You have these dots and commas at the end of letters and stuff like that. So the grammar is quite difficult. So we had a grammar test and, you know, I put all of my effort into it. I was like, enough. And... <laughs> I was trying my best and I got a hundred percent. I got the best grade in class. I got no mistakes in the grammar test. And I was made fun of because the teacher said that I cheated, even though there's no way of me cheating because <laughs> it just didn't make sense. So yeah. That one time I tried, it got dismissed. So basically what the teachers were saying developed into a reality. The bad things they were saying came true because a child trusts an adult. They think the adults know better. So, yeah. They sent me to a psychiatrist at the age of nine, to a school psychiatrist. And I remember going there for a few days. The psychiatrist didn't see anything wrong with me. <laughs> she was giving me these, like you see in movies, those um, butterflies on a, on a piece of paper and you have to say what it is. I remember seeing that and, you know, I had to do these tests and I didn't know why I was there. I didn't know what was going on. I was a bit confused. But yeah, <laughs> the teachers, they sent me to a psychiatrist. When in reality, 
they should have been seeing one for a long time. And I don't have any positive memories from my childhood in school when I was in Lithuania. And Yeah, they thought that something was wrong with me and not the school system, not the teachers, as the kid. <laughs> but anyways, when I grew up, obviously, I realized why these things were happening. And basically, I just wanted my parents' attention, you know? I was misbehaving in class. Well, not really misbehaving, just not listening, not doing the homework. And just to be real, if you're... If you're from Lithuania or those countries, you know how much homework an eight-year-old gets. You get like two hours of homework a day, which is fucking crazy. But yeah, I just wanted my parents' attention. I just wanted to do something to speak to my parents on Skype. That's what we used back then. And th that's why I was doing these things. And yeah, I was just a kid that wanted attention. So basically, I'll speak about my grandmother, not the one that I was living with, but my dad's mom. And at the moment, she is a teacher in a primary school. And she, she teaches kids around my age. Well, when I was in primary school, experiencing these bad things. So kids at the age of around eight, and she's teaching them at the moment and she's the kind of person that is a role model to all the kids so she's a role model she lets kids and especially boys play she lets them run she lets them play fight with their other friends she understands them And it never develops into anything negative. She understands that boys will be boys. That boys are just longing to be masculine. That boys just want to play, run, fight. And that's normal. It's normal nature. But if you're listening to this and you're a teacher and you're not letting your students, your boys in class, play, run, then you're making big mistakes. You're taking away from your student's childhood. You're feminizing your boys. You're making them more into girls. And that has a big impact in their lives. A child's brain is developing the most until the age of seven and eight. Anything they learn until that age has a very big impact on their future lives. That determines their whole course of life. And if my parents didn't take me away from Lithuania and from that environment at the age of nine and take me with them, I don't know how I would have turned out. I might have been the alcoholic that she spoke of, you know. Teaching is a gift. It's something that doesn't come to everyone. And you know that. If you're doing teaching for money, then... Please just stop. Save all the kids. If you're doing this just out of financial purposes and you don't feel like teaching these kids, then don't. Do something else with your lives. There's plenty of other people that want to teach them kids. Teaching is a gift. It's something that happens when you're born. Everyone is gifted in dif different things. And teaching is a very unique gift. So, a teacher should be a role model. It should be someone that understands the behaviors of children. You should understand basic psychology, at least. I was lucky enough 
to escape the situation. And I know many, 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 many children don't have the opportunity to escape these situations. Situations where teachers pick on the children, get into their heads, and change their courses of life for the worse. It's sad. And it's sad that I had to go through that. But I remember this. I remember this teacher. It was a female teacher. She was around 40, maybe 45, when she was teaching her class. And that's the kind of person that disgusts me. That's the kind of person that repulses me. Because if I hadn't escaped that situation, I might have been dead at the moment. Or might have been at a very, very bad path of life. So I know these things that I said were extreme. What the teacher was doing. She was also being physically abusive. She was grabbing me by the ear out of class and it was pretty sore. You know, she was very physically aggressive very verbal, verbally abusive. I hated school. And, you know, that's why I didn't enjoy school in my future years. Because I had a bad image of school. And it never changed. <laughs> I never enjoyed a day of school up until the age of 17 when I left school, when I graduated school. And I didn't enjoy university. I went to university. I didn't enjoy it. So it did have an impact. So if you're a teacher listening to this, please be careful of your actions. Please be careful of how you teach your children, of what you say to them. Because what you might say or do might impact their lives. And... I hope that you impact their lives for the better. I hope that you say the correct things. Give them motivation. Tell them that they're doing good because they want to do better. Even if they're not doing good, tell them that they're doing good. Tell them that they're going to be better. Tell them that they're going to make it. Give them a bit of motivation. Never put a kid down. Never be abusive towards a kid. Because you should be a role model. You should be someone that the kid looks up to and wants to become. So, I hope you gained some insight from this little story. I probably missed, like, at least 50% of the things. I tried to keep the short, but... It's a very long story, and when you try to describe two years in 20 minutes, it's quite difficult, so. Be mindful, and yeah. Don't make the mistakes that that teacher made, and be a role model, and also let kids play. Let boys be boys because that's what makes us men. Take it easy and I hope you enjoyed the little listen. If you watched to the end, then thank you. And I want to firstly thank the 15 new subscribers that have subscribed to my channel. It really means a lot. I know this channel isn't easy to listen to. It's not easy information to take in. Um, it's not entertaining. It's just something that something that you do to self-develop. So, yeah. 15 people is a lot in my eyes. That's 15 people that are willing to learn and progress. So, thank you. And there's a little bonus. Um, 
<laughs> little bonus story from when I was eight or maybe nine. So when I finished third class, I think it was around, maybe it was around nine. So we all got these awards and all of the parents were in class. They got invited into the class and my parents were abroad. So my grandmother had to be invited and basically all these kids got their awards so it's like a little poster it's like a little a4 sheet of paper and had their photo on it and the achievements for the year <laughs> so you know kids were getting achievements like uh yeah the best grades the most fun person well the most fun kid or uh the most optimistic you know things like that so guess what award i got <laughs> so basically i got an award for the least done homework and the worst behavior <laughs> i got an award for the worst worst behavior and the least done homework and my grandmother was in the class and she was surrounded by all of these parents and those awards were not given in private they were like vocalized you know and i just remember my grandmother's face she was so embarrassed yeah don't be like that teacher please Please don't be like that teacher. So yeah. Thanks for watching until the end. And peace.